How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up your RX-7 FC for drifting. And I'm going to be showing you guys the right parts to get for your RX-7 so that way you can enjoy drifting at an affordable price. But before we get started, hit that like and subscribe and make sure you do not forget to hit that notification bell so that way you guys are going to be notified when my new video is up. Alright, let's get started. Alright, picture this. You just got yourself an RX-7 and you want to take it to the track and so you did. You went out there to drift your car and all you did is spin out or you can even get the car to break loose. You're frustrated, you're defeated, you just want to quit and just call it a day. The question came to mind, what do I need to do with this car? But I'll be showing you guys simplest and affordable way to set up your RX-7 for drifting. One thing you guys need to know about RX-7 FCs is that the RX-7s were made to have less steering angle. Which is the issue why you guys are spinning out the track or when you're drifting is because there's not much steering angle. So the solution for it is to get a steering angle kit. There are several different steering angle kits you can get. The ones I'm using is the Villains Angle Kit. Now the important thing you need to know when you go Going for the Villains Angle Kit is that you have to be using an S4 lower control arm for your RX-7. Now if you have an S4 or RX-7 it's okay, but if you have an S5 you want to go ahead and get a pair of S4 lower control arms. The reason for that is because you're going to be using the lower control arm extension from Villains Angle Kit. So the Villains Angle Kit offers two different options. One is if you send your own knuckles it will only cost you $375, but if you do not have your own knuckles then it's gonna cost you $625 so you're gonna get the whole kit I would suggest you just send your own course and that way the cost is not gonna hurt your bank now this is the max steering angle for stock RX-7 FC's as you can see it's not much Here's an example when I modified the steering angle in my RX-7 uh, three years ago. Oh, and if you need to know how to install the Villains Angle Kit, I'll put the link up in this card right here. It's a little bit tricky and I was confused for a bit because there was not a lot of videos to go off on, like any examples. It was kind of like, uh, kind of like you need to know what you're doing, but somehow I was able to piece everything together by watching different videos across YouTube and uh, somehow I was fortunate enough to install it the correct way. So once you install this kit, uh, you will gain 55 degrees of steering lock with around 5 degrees of Ackerman. The kit includes their signature modified knuckles, inner and tie rods, 48 millimeter bolt on lower ball joint extension and rack spacers for the extra angle. I'll be sure to include the link in their website down in the description below. Another thing to expect when you install this kit is that um, your wheel will be hitting front sway bar underneath. If you're using 16s on the front, it should not really rub the sway bars in the front. Once I went up to 17s for the front, and my tires have been rubbing front sway bar and sometimes it gets in the way which causing me to spin out and so last year I just went ahead and tried no sway bars and I kept the sway bars in the rear so it was a good setup I wasn't spinning out as much and it helped me a lot with drifting okay so the next setup you guys can do for this car is the uh, suspension now I started with cheap eBay suspension they were like uh, max speeding rod I think the earlier versions of it and I've had those since 2013 when I got this car and uh, I've been drifting on those, been riding on those and it held up pretty great and until like two years ago that's when I got the uh, Part Shop Max. The Max Speeding Rod only cost me $250 from eBay. To be honest, I was able to compete with them and do great actually. I'm saying all this because even though you have cheap parts in your car, uh, it would still perform good and it's capable of doing things that you're not, you're not going to expect. And so if you're feeling like you 
can't afford the part shop max or anything high-end ones then you can go for the cheaper ones and start with those just want to let you guys know that it's possible and you can do that all right so the suspension I got right now is from part shop max if you were able to save up and get a little bit of money I would suggest uh, getting some high-end coilovers with these type of coilovers you can dial in your suspension dial in your drifting your setup much better all right as you can see here you can adjust the damper so you can see this knob this is for the dampers uh, these things right here adjust the uh, the caster and the camber as well for the rears the only thing you can do is to adjust the dampers but if you're trying to adjust a camber for the rear you must get an adjustable camber arm for these type of parts uh, I would suggest get everything from part shop max when it comes to suspension parts especially for the rear part of the RX-7 uh, they have pretty much everything that you need there so when you go to the parts shop max website you're gonna see that there are two types of coilovers for the RX-7s there is a pro coilovers and competition coilovers for the FC now if you're going for drifting you must get the competition coilovers but if you're going for a track uh, I would suggest getting the pro coilovers because they have different preload on their springs so the competition coilovers for the FC's will run you about $1,200 plus tax and shipping which pretty much cost me grand total of $1,600 so I mean it's a little bit pricey but it's definitely worth it. So the thing about RX-7s is that they were designed for cornering. They made the rear wheels turn to a certain degree so, which is great for cornering but it was bad for drifting. And so people realize that that's one of the major thing that you need to replace an RX-7. So I highly suggest get the uh, toe steering eliminator bushings from Part Shop Max and pretty much replace all the old bushings in the rear and you can get these replacement solid parts here like you have solid diff forward bushing mount, solid diff riser bushings, spherical bearings, conversion pair and trailing arm rear upper bushing pair. Uh, subframe risers, later on you're gonna understand why you're gonna need that because as of right now I don't have subframe risers and I can only adjust the camber as much as I can because it's hitting the subframe right now. Once you replace those bushings there are other bushings that you need to replace as well well, once you get all those things, you're close to achieving a very solid rear end for the RX-7. Whenever I come across another driver who's an RX-7 FC just like mine, there's a setup differently. They haven't replaced their bushings in the rear. And when they get to ride in my car and they ask, how do I just kick out my car easily and drift it with no problem? I tell them it's because I replaced all my bushings and it made my car easier to drift. All those little bushings play a big part when it comes to drifting. So the other parts you can get for the rears are adjustable rear lateral rods as for the toe you can adjust it subframe camber arm another one is a trailing arm camber links uh, I don't have that on my RX-7 but I think I need to get that as well but I think that's it for the uh, the rear end and I guarantee you that if you replace all of them you're gonna have an easier time kicking out your RX-7 sideways all right so the next one you can do for your RX-7 to make it easier to drift is weld your diff do not even start with uh, VLSD although there are people out there that can actually weld VLSD if that's the only thing you have but get yourself an open diff and get somebody to weld them. I remember back then when I started drifting, I was so hard-headed, but I stuck with just VLSD on my RX-7 and thought that I could, you know, I gotta learn everything the hard way. You don't need all that stuff. Just go and start with welded diff because that's what everybody starts at right now and that's the standard right now. If you don't have a welded diff, then you're just gonna be wasting time. You're gonna slow your progression and you're just wasting tires. When you finally set up your suspension, your angle kits, make sure to get it aligned, get motor mounts, so that way you get the feel for the car much better. Get either solid or polyurethane because your engine's not gonna be rocking back and forth. Once you install all the solid bushings, solid motor mounts, uh, and solid transmission mounts, I will promise you that you will feel and hear all sorts of whining and feel all the sorts of vibrations in the car. Uh, I would suggest get bucket seat and get the racing harness. Make sure to get the harness bar. 
if you're just gonna be starting out, trying out like, you know, 180 or doing donuts or uh, figure eight, probably don't need the bucket seat. But when you're getting comfortable out there and you wanna get a little bit more speed, you're gonna realize that your body's gonna sway everywhere because you're feeling all the G-force. You're not staying still when you're inside the car when drifting. But if you get a bucket seat and get a racing harness, you're gonna be planted just in one place and you're gonna feel the car much better and you're gonna be able to precisely drift with ease and that's definitely important to have. Like I said, if you're ready for it, get it, but if not, if you're starting for it, it's okay to just keep the stock seats for now, but later on, definitely get the bucket seats. Also, when you install a bucket seat, I would recommend getting a quick release for your steering wheel because it's definitely gonna get in the way when you're getting in and out of the car. I don't think you really need a hydro brake for your RX-7, but if you're turbo or you have more power, then yes, I suggest getting hydro brake. But with this setup right here, I'm only running 117 before, but now maybe one close to 130 to the wheels. I rarely use my handbrake. I remember doing a high speed entry with third gear and I pulled my e-brake and that's all I needed really to lock up the rears. But you can definitely get away with just a handbrake and that'll be it. I think that's pretty much everything I need to show you guys how to set up your RX-7 for drifting. But if I do want to add one thing is that if you're going to keep your car rotary, of course, I highly suggest getting an aftermarket radiator and I definitely recommend getting coil radiators because since getting the coil radiators, I never had any heating issues and I know with RX-7s, they you know, they tend to heat up a little bit, especially if you're out in the summertime. They tend to like get a little bit more heat inside the engine bay. I suggest getting aluminum radiators. Yeah, they're a little bit pricey, but it would save you a lot of money in the long run. And I have the insulation video right here, plus the electric fan that I have here. You can check that out and it's gonna be useful for later on. All right, so I think that's it for this video. I hope I covered everything on showing you guys how to set up your RX-7 for drifting. But if you guys have any more questions, feel free to comment down below and ask me anything, and I'll be sure to respond back to you guys. You can find all the links and the parts that I mentioned in this video down below in the description. Be sure to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.